Hi everyone, I'm Erin Thompson of Everyday Expressions and I am thrilled to craft with you for SBC Fest September 13th and 14th. Join many other great crafters and me in just a few weeks and it's totally free. All you need to do is register. I have shared a registration link in the description box below for you. You can watch the event and craft along with the instructors or you can re-watch the videos at any later time. If you're interested, there are supplies lists available for each class featuring essential supplies from scrapbook.com. I will link my lists below in the description box in case you would like to purchase my class products. Today, I have a homework video for you so that you can prepare for our class that goes live for SBC Fest in September and you'll be all ready to craft along with me to create our project together. I've tried to note all of the supplies and cuts in a text box as we go along, but don't forget that you can pause the video and then restart any time you need to slow down and work along with me. So here you can see I've just gathered all of my supplies and put them in these zipper mesh pouches from scrapbook.com. I love to keep all of my supplies organized together in one place as I create projects, especially if I work across days. So I'm, I've just pulled them all out and I've listed all of the supplies in the text boxes as you see we've gone along. One of my favorite crafty times of the year is fall time. So it's perfect that we have SBC Fest in September and I thought the perfect project would be to create something in beautiful fall colors in my favorite type of card, florals. So you can see here, I've just gone through the paper pads and I'm pulling out colors that appeal to me, things that I think will work well for um, the fall floral die cuts. I love the rich, warm, earthy colors in uh, fall flowers. And I also like the contrast of when the leaves are still green and they haven't turned brown yet. So that was the idea I had in my head for this. So I'm just going through each of the paper pads and pulling colors that appeal to me. I highly encourage you to pick colors that you like and um, what's going to make your heart happy in creating this card. It's going to come together no matter what what you choose. So I've just gone through and you can see I picked purples and oranges and what you might notice is I tend to pick a darker color and then a coordinating lighter color. Um, so I have the magenta and then I have the purplish pink and then I have a peach and an orange and the light greens and the dark greens. So you know definitely think about doing that too. It makes your layering very easy. Now here I've gotten to the oranges and I see I've picked four different ones. So I'm just going to pick a couple, a darker one and a lighter one that I like. And um, it may not be exactly what you pick, but don't worry, it'll be fine. So now we just need to create an A2 size card base. And I'm going to trim that down to eight and a half by five and a half. And then we just need to grab our scoreboard and score that at um, the eight and a half by five and a half. At the eight and a half inch side, you need to score it at four and a quarter. Phew, I got that out. It was a tongue twister for a second. So let's get that scored and then we'll set that, that aside and it will be all ready for us when, when we're ready to put everything together. And now I'm going to grab the darkest green and you'll see previously I had picked out two dark greens and I decided to go with the um, a little bit more vibrant one for the green on this card. So I kind of set the darker one aside for a later project. I'm trimming this uh, piece to five and a quarter by four inches. That way we'll have a little bit of um, gold foil in the background when we put our card together. Now I'm using the Arches Nested Dies and I count inward from 
the outside. So you'll see I chose uh, arch number three and arch number five to create a frame. And I'm going to lay these out and then I'll use a piece of my scrapbook.com mint tape and try to center it and get those even. And run that through the die cut machine. And now we've got a frame for our card. And you'll see how all this comes together when we meet again in September. So we're just prepping with getting all of our die cuts ready. We would not have enough time if we were all die cutting together um, in September. So this way we'll be all set and really all we'll need to do is um, prep and or we've done all the prep work is we will just um, put it all together. I decided to pull in my die cut machine and um, that way we could die cut together and you could see as it runs through the machine. So now I've um, pulled out arch number eight and then I pull out um, arch number 10. And that gives you a good kind of quarter inch frame for each of these. So we will, once we die cut this one, we'll have an outer frame and then an inner frame. And it's just one more way that I like to kind of focus on the center of a card and it adds a lot of interest on a card front. When we have a lot of die cuts on a card, it helps to have the focal point, something to draw your eye in and not kind of get lost in, in all of the details. So just be very careful pulling off your mint tape. And there we go. We've got our frames all finished. And don't throw those middle sections away um, from the previous one and that one. Definitely save those. I will tuck those into the, into the envelope with those dies to possibly use for a later project. I never throw those away. So now I'm die cutting one of the thanks dies from the thank you word dies. And I'm cutting that out of the uh, mirror gold cardstock. And be very gentle if it's sticking to your mat. When you pull it up, you don't want it to tear. And isn't that pretty? I love that. That's going to look really nice on our card. So set that aside. And now we're going to die cut one more of those thanks sentiments out of the magenta cardstock. And we're going to use this actually as a shadow die cut. So if you're wondering why I'm cutting so many, um, that's what I'm thinking. It will just help our sentiment pop off of the card and really center the eye. And then next, once I kind of use my tweezers or my craft pick and get this thanks sentiment out. We're going to die cut one more thanks and we're going to get that die cut that from white cardstock. And all the only reason I'm doing that is to adhere behind the uh, burgundy one and give us just a little bit more structure when we adhere that to our card so that um, it doesn't fold and bend on us. You, you could skip this step. You don't have to do it but I like to do it just for a little bit more structure and sometimes even die cut several and glue them together for dimension and structure. So there you go. You see all three of the things. Now I've pulled out all of the other colored cardstock and we're just going to go through with our floral dies and I like to mass produce. Um, when I have all of these supplies out, I will cut many pieces at one time and then save them for later projects. So just to make our life easy, I'm going to pull out all of the floral dies and you'll see I don't use all of them. So pick the floral dies that you like and you can always refer to the back of the insert there and see how scrapbook.com 
envisioned the florals layering, but I have to tell you, <laughs> I'm kind of a lazy crafter. And so I don't always follow the directions the way maybe the designer envisioned. And I just picked larger dies and smaller dies that I thought would look pretty together. And I just die cut all of the pieces. So I encourage you to do the same. Pick the flowers that you like. If you want to die cut every single one in all of the colors, you can definitely do that. Um, I just picked the ones that I thought would layer nicely and I liked. So that's what I'm doing here on this first, on this dark purple color. And I don't need any of the foliage. We'll do that later when we get to our green papers. This is just um, for all of the layering flowers. And you can see I'm thinking, it's like, do I want anything else? No, I think that's pretty good. <laughs> so like I said, I like to, to have a selection and I like to die cut a whole bunch for a later project. So I'm picking all the dies that I like and putting them on there and I'm going to go through, you'll see, we will die cut every one of these dies in all of the colors because I hate to do work more than once. And so those that we don't use for this, we'll save for a later project. So as we go, um, I'm just going to use my craft pick and pop these out of the dies and you'll see I set them aside in their own piles based on the die cut. So first I go through the purple. And we're just going to organize them by the flower. And then as soon as we've got all these out, we will move on to the next color paper. Now, if you own the um, SBC sorting trays, either the large ones or the smaller ones, those are perfect to use to keep these organized, especially if, like I said earlier, it takes you, you know, you're going to craft over several days using these and it would help you keep them organized. So here you, you see, now I've got the purple ones done and let's move on to the kind of purplish pink um, paper. And you, you don't have to go in order of the paper because honestly, you're going to make a die cut from all of the colors except for the greens. So just work your way through them in whatever order works for you. And sometimes, like you can see there, the die will um, stick to your top plate. So if you're missing one, don't forget to look there because that does happen quite a bit. And I, I think, where's the die? I lost it. Did I drop it on the floor? And I look and sometimes it has stuck to the top plate. And now I'm using that magenta that we previously used for the thanks die. And we're going to once again die cut every single piece. And you'll find that by doing this later, when we create our card, it's so much easier to pick the flowers that you like, the larger ones, and then you have the selection in every color, and you know that they all co coordinate already because um, we've we figured that out when we selected the colors. So whatever you choose is going to layer and look beautiful. Now we've moved on to the darker orange color. And I think those will be so pretty layered with that darker purple paper. Um, they are complementary colors. Orange, or no, let's see. Orange and blue is complementary, but um, it's pretty close. Uh, so not, let's see, is it, yeah. Orange and blue are complementary colors. I had to think for a second. And, um, but purple is right there. So they're almost complementary. 
so I think they'll look really nice layered and, and make really pretty kind of fall flowers. And then I don't know about you, but this yellow color, it's kind of a warm yellow, um, just a drop of maybe orange in it. It just was so pretty. I think this might be one of my favorite colors out of the, the um, out of the card packs. And then this was a lighter color yellow that um, I selected. So let me know in the comments what colors you're picking for your flowers and um, what was maybe your favorite color or even favorite uh, card pa uh, paper pack. What color collection uh, maybe. So here you see now we're all finished with all of our florals and there are all of our piles up above. And I like to select for foliage kind of longer pieces and then um, smaller, maybe thicker leaves. So I've chosen these three dies and I'm going to cut one set out of the lighter color, one set out of the medium green color, and then when we get there, you'll see that I want two sets of the darkest color green. I like to have lots of green when I start um, putting my card together and assembling everything. So once again, use your craft pick, get all those out. And here's the medium color. And like I said, I chose, I didn't choose really earthy kind of like brown colors. I chose the green colors because I like it in the fall time when you still have the pretty dark green leaves like on chrysanthemums and the mums and things like that. Um, so, but I do have in my mind, I think it would be really pretty to create, um, like cards for October and November, maybe Thanksgiving cards, um, giving thanks and blessings and really in the warmer brown tones and maybe a dried flower look. Don't you think that would be really pretty? I have that in my mind and hopefully I will get some other samples, um, inspiration samples completed by the time um, our class airs so that you have lots of inspiration and can, you know, have a lot of um, ideas for all of these products going forward. So now in the layered butterflies, I chose the small butterfly, the detailed die, and I'm running that through on um, kind of the light orange color. And then we're going to use the, the outline die for this and cut that out of the darker purple color. I think this would look really pretty together. Isn't he cute? I love to add, a, I mean, butterflies are always good to add, right? You can't go wrong with adding a butterfly. So we'll run that through and then we'll have that cute little butterfly layered in the kind of soft orange and the purple. You can tell I like that color combination because I, I just was drawn to that over and over again. Now we need to cut another arch um, and you'll see how it all comes together when we put our card together, but we need the number four from the outside, you're going to choose the number four arch die. And this will go nicely when we chose the number three and the number five and we created the frame. This will be a background for um, that frame. So we know it'll fit perfectly by selecting the number four arch. And there we have it. All of our pieces are die cut and ready to assemble our card. So just a quick recap, you should have all of your floral die cuts, the one butterfly, the two arch frames, the light green arch background, the dark green background panel, your card base, and then uh, one gold piece of paper for your background. Oh, and don't forget your thanks sentiments. I almost forgot those. 
So if you haven't already purchased our class supplies, don't forget that I've shared a direct link in the description box below to make your shopping super simple. And finally, I would be so happy if you would like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And don't forget to hit the notification button to know when I've got new technique videos for you. Thanks so much for joining me today. I can't wait to see you in September. Bye-bye, friends.